In this video, what I want to do is I want to share with you five things that I wish I knew when I first started lifting that would have made a lot of difference. I think it would have saved me a lot of trouble and I want you to learn from my experience. I don't want you to make the same exact mistakes that I've made and also want to teach you certain things that I've learned over the years, having done this for so many years now, I mean, since 2009 when I first started, things are different. Things are way different than back in the day when we didn't have the right scientific knowledge, when we didn't have an idea of how to approach training and nutrition, all these things. So I think I learned a lot more about things, especially about psychology and the importance of that and how important it is really to understand yourself. So I want to show you and share with you certain things that I've learned that I think will really help you on your journey. So the first thing I wish I knew when I started lifting was the role of motivation when it comes to consistency. I didn't understand that motivation comes and goes. I didn't get it that motivation is something that you can't rely on, that you're not supposed to actually be motivated every day. And I thought that something was wrong with me because I was reading about these guys who were just super fired up to go there every day, who were just waking up in the middle of the day, jumping out of bed to go to the gym and hit some PRs, to eat healthy and do all this stuff they were super passionate about. And I thought that something is wrong with me because I don't feel like that every day. And I didn't realize that you're not supposed to feel like that every day. And when you don't feel like that, you still go there and get it done and you exercise your discipline to do it regardless of how you feel. And the magic of that is that the more you exercise your discipline, first off, you get more discipline, but then the second off, you build the habit. And once you build the habit, you don't need to rely as much on motivation and discipline to get it done. And this is really the secret that for me, like I, I call it a secret, but it's, you could call it common sense, but for me, it changed everything. This is the thing that really changed my whole approach, not just to fitness, but to all areas of my life. I realized the importance of showing up. I realized that the importance of the 10, 20 minute workout might not be there as the best workout to build muscle, but is there to actually help you maintain and build the habit. And that's when I started really being hyper committed. I started being super consistent. I really started showing up regardless of what was going on in my life. And what that helped me do is really cultivate all these habits that allowed me to build a business, to get the body that I wanted, to really help me change my life. And I, because it all comes down to consistency. At the end of the day, no matter how perfect your training plan is or how perfect your nutrition plan is, if you're not consistent with it, it's not gonna work. And I realized that this power of consistency comes down to habits, regardless on how motivated you are or how you feel like it, because that's not something you can control. Discipline is also something that's gonna run out eventually, but habits are just so powerful and make the whole process more automated and you can trust the habit. And a lot of these habits that we had and I had specifically were actually the habits that led me to get out of shape to begin with and when I started changing them, it was as easy to stick with them after a while than it, as it was with those bad habits. So it was really amazing when that shift happened and I just realized that motivation is just something that comes and goes, unreliable, disciplinous and habits are really where it's at. So this is one of the first things I think that really changed my life in general, not just when it comes to fitness, but overall I think it's one of the most most important lessons that I've ever learned. Now, the second thing I was showing you when I started lifting was that for me, mindset is going to be half the battle. I didn't understand that it's not all about the information. It's not all about the tips and the tricks and things that I'm gonna pick out from books or online, whatever I read. It's actually about the mindset. And when I realized that mindset was actually the thing that was holding me back, because when I was falling off track, I wasn't learning from my mistakes, I wasn't problem solving enough, I wasn't committed enough, I didn't have the persistence, I wasn't really thinking about it in the right way, I didn't understand how to master my own self-talk and then I was getting in my own way and self-sabotaging, that those were mindset issues. That those are not issues with the actual number of sets you're gonna do for your bench press or whatever you do in the gym. It's actually mindset that was holding me back. And once I addressed this, things just got so much easier. And before I was really trying to kind of put a band-aid on a broken leg. I didn't understand what was the real problem. I thought, try to solve it through some tips or little hacks and things like that, but nothing worked because I wasn't addressing the root problem. So mindset, half of success. So to this day, I believe that really, this is the most underrated, underestimated thing that everybody gets wrong when we're talking about success and fitness is working on your mindset. Now, the third thing I wish I knew when I first started lifting, which is a tough one to admit, is that I'm not the type of person that can go do something without a plan. I'm not the type of person that can go there and wing it and be successful. I know there's people like that that can just figure it out as they go. I'm not that guy. Like if I wanna do something, I need absolute clarity, I need specifics, I need step-by-step -step exactly what to do according to the plan. If I don't have this, I'm gonna be a disaster. Guessing for me is pain. Like I just cannot 
do anything. I just get super paralyzed. I just don't know what I'm doing and I just get overwhelmed and nothing really happens. And because when I don't have a plan, I also put in less effort. I just don't go all in because it's so vague and I don't know what to do. I also get less results and then I don't see the purpose. If I don't see results, I don't see purpose and then I don't want to do it anymore. So it's really something that can turn into this really negative spiral that now I realized about myself. If I want to get in, just say any goal, like any goal, doesn't matter if it's fitness or if it's business or something in my social life, like anything, like I have to have a game plan first and then I focus all my effort on creating the plan to the best of my ability and then afterwards I implement the plan and then I, I know I'm good and I can just keep taking action and then as I have the plan, I can keep changing the plan but I have to start with something like that. And this is such a huge thing. You need to know about yourself. If you're the type of person like me, don't go there and attempt to wing it. Get a proper plan and you're gonna go a really, really long way. You're gonna put in the effort and I guarantee you it's gonna make a huge difference for you. Now, the fourth thing I was showing you when I first started lifting is that not every workout that I do will be a PR workout, but it doesn't really matter because over the long run, what really matters is giving it your absolute best. And there's gonna be a distribution of different workouts. Like sometimes you're gonna go into the gym and it's gonna be amazing. Like you're gonna hit all the PRs, weight are gonna go up, you're gonna feel strong, you're gonna feel like the Hulk, and that's great. But there's gonna be a lot of workouts where and you just go in there and you just get the job done. You do your planned amount of sets and reps and maybe do some incremental improvements sometimes, but that's like the majority of the workouts. But then there's also those workouts when things just suck, like everything aches, you're fatigued, you have to reduce the weights, you have to deload, you have to take a step back, you just don't feel good and you don't feel fully recovered and that's okay. And I just didn't understand that that's also a part of the journey. I thought that every workout had to be this hardcore, like massive suffering, you gotta crush yourself, like you gotta leave it all there. And that's not the truth. I mean, over the long run, what really matters is being consistent and really putting in the effort and seeing that progression over many, many months. It's not about one single workout and how that one workout feels. It's actually about the whole year of training, multiple years of training that is really gonna take you to reach your potential. And I put so much weight on that one workout and that one result, I was so attached to that single outcome that I didn't realize the big picture. I didn't realize that over many months of training, that's really when you generate changes, that it's not just about that one single workout. So this is really an important lesson for me, again, that not to beat myself up over the fact that I'm not always perfect, but really be there and show up and do the best I can. And look, if I have to take a step back, that's also a part of the journey and you will also have to do this. No matter how strong you are, there's gonna be workouts when you're gonna have to reduce the weight. There's gonna be workouts when you're just not gonna feel like it. Life will throw you a curveball. that's what life does. We all have this and it's important to be able to take the ego out of it, embrace that as a part of the journey and still keep showing up. Now the fifth thing I was showing you when I first started lifting is to never ever ever compare my training results with anyone else's. And this is such a big mistake that I've made in the first couple of years of training that I was constantly comparing my results. I was comparing my strength numbers, I was comparing how I looked, how lean I was, and it was just this battle that I couldn't win. I was so frustrated when I saw other guys getting results faster or I saw other guys who were doing the same program as me and their muscles were looking differently. And I just didn't understand that there are certain things you can control, there are certain things you can't control. Your genetics, you can't control. You have the cards you're dealt with and your job is actually to maximize what you have, like maximize your own genetic potential. And I'm all up for hard work, but there's a lot of people say, oh, I mean, anything can be done if you just work hard enough. Look, you're not gonna look like Ronnie Coleman, regardless of how hard you work. I mean, there's, there's genetic outliers, there's people with different genetics, and that's just something we gotta accept. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how someone else looks, it's all about you and how you look, how you feel, are you healthy, are you fit, are you happy with your own results? And the thing is like, you're never gonna be happy with your own results if you keep comparing yourself to other people. You can always find someone who's leaner and bigger at the same time. You can always find someone who's stronger than you. And I remember falling for this myself, like I would go and watch these powerlifting channels and I would feel so bad because I can't squat four plates and I can't bench three and a half plates and I can't do this, I can't do that. It's all like I can't, I can't, I can't. Instead of really giving myself props and also trying to be better and beating my own records and trying to really work with what I got. And I was so caught up in that that I completely missed out on optimizing my own process and looking at what worked for me because I was always trying to figure out what works for someone else and try to do that. And this was such a big trap that I really wish I knew about this 
And as someone would point this out to me because it's a battle that I just struggle with so long to overcome. And I think today we even suffer with just a lot more because there's so much more exposure to different physiques and different results. And I feel like this like current time emphasizes this comparison, especially nowadays because you're gonna see people's best shape online. Like everybody's gonna post the angle that they look the absolute best. Everybody's gonna post the leanest photo they have, not the one like month later when they regain 10 pounds, right? So it's like all about this comparison and we're often comparing our worst day with someone's absolute best day. And even that comparison you can't win. What you can look at is your work ethic. Compare your work ethic. If you see someone who's working harder than you, that is a valid comparison. Then you can actually get up and start hustling more and actually start putting in the effort. But don't compare the actual result. That attachment to the outcome and trying to get that exact same outcome, that same shape, which is genetically determined, you're gonna really lose that game because you cannot win that game. No matter what you do, Again, you have your cars that you've been dealt with and it's all about maximizing that. And I'm gonna also leave a video here at the end, by the way, that's gonna definitely help you out on your journey. If you wanna get leaner, if you wanna learn more about nutrition, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing below as well if you wanna learn more about fitness, nutrition, and more information that will really help you on your journey. So consider subscribing below, also hit that bell icon to enable notifications, and I will see you in that next video.